Hello and welcome everyone to a sort of let's play and sort of tutorial-ish Dwarf Fortress playthrough or whatever you want to call it. So, uh, I will first assume that you know what Dwarf Fortress is as you have come here to watch this video. However, you might not know how to download it, so I will show you how to do this. And I have here loaded up a uh, sort of Dwarf Fortress starter pack. It is a uh, it is a pack containing Dwarf Fortress and some other useful tools that you can use in order to play the game and makes it a lot easier. It has graphic packs and all this, making it easier to see what is going on in the screen and so on if you don't like the ASCII graphics of it. So. I will put a link to this page in the description below and uh, then you can find this file, this is the most up-to-date uh, Dwarf Fortress build I would say and the newest starter pack edition as well so you would just come to this page click download now, I've already downloaded it so you don't need to wait it but you click here and uh, then you will get a zip file looking like this uh, after extracting it you will get this Dwarf Fortress folder here, Starter Pack Edition, so you just open it and uh, in order to start the game you would just open up this Starter Pack Launcher and this is then the launcher that you will use in order to, to run the game and all the other tools you might need in order to play the game as easily as possible. So first things first you can look here you can uh, modify a few things if you don't want invaders, temperature, cave-ins, weather, artifacts, whatever. I usually just leave this at default it's usually okay. If you don't want aquifers you can turn them off as well. Key bindings I use the vanilla dwarf fortress ones however you can use whichever you want. And uh, then over to graphics here. So there's a number of graphic packs included in this starter box pack. The one I will be using is the Phoebus one. And uh, I just like like the look of it. You might like something else, but that's fine. But I'm going to use this one. You will then click here, click install graphics. So on liquid death is actually something that I will turn on. Because I like knowing how deep the water is, so you can see it quite easily without having to mouse over it and so on. So I will have that on. Uh, you can customize almost anything in here. That should be fine for now. In utilities we have all these programs that will help you run the game or play the game rather. For example we have the Dwarf Therapist which is a really useful utility program. It will help you manage your dwarves and make it a lot lot easier for you to to play the game. So I will just run the program. It will complain not having a Dwarf Fortress open, but I will start it now nevertheless. Uh, then you have a few ways you could, for instance, turn on sound sense, which is just a sound mod, adding a lot of new sounds. And we have 3D builders and all sorts of thing here. It's things here if you want to mess around with them. And then we have the advanced section. You can turn the sound volume if you want to, you have an FPS counter, you can have auto save which I usually have on seasonal, so four times a year in game years and that is usually plenty. Also initial save is quite good to have on. Uh, pause and save is nice because then you can walk away if you if it's saving and it can take a while sometimes. And uh, then we have Dwarf Fortress hacks if you want to hack something. I usually don't use them, I like playing it myself instead. So, after having uh, messed around with this, started maybe a few utilities, messed around with them, we would want to start the, f the game itself, and then we would just play Dwarf Fortress. And it will open a bunch of windows. This is the main uh, game screen. This is the one you will be using most of the time. And uh, uh, I have already a world, a world, a few worlds created. So. Uh, I could play in them if I wanted to. You can have multiple words created and choose which one you will play in. You can play adventure mode, you can play Dwarf Fortress mode. You can choose 
whichever one you prefer. You can even read lore about the world if you want to. So you can you can learn about all the heroes that have been in your world that will be in your world and so on. What's also amazing about the game is that if you want to, you can follow the you can trace an an item which has been created somewhere in the world and then you can trace it uh its travels throughout the world from north to south or whatever if a human had it and then an elf stole it from him then a dragon ate him and kept it as a se as a souvenir or whatever you can follow it along i think it will record all of that and this is really amazing what's even more amazing is that only two people have created this game and they have been working on it for almost a decade now already or more than a decade actually so without further ado let's just create new world here and this is uh, uh, completely you can play this game without ever touching the mouse it is completely keyboard driven so let's see here so welcome to the alpha of dwarf fortress yes this game is actually still in alpha even if after te 10 years and more of development I think it's at uh, 0 0.40 something version so it's not even half done ready to be published if, if you would say it that way so let's continue here and uh, then we should create the world I think I will create the medium world that should give us plenty of space to play around in history this really affects how much items, how many civiliza civilizations and so on there are in the world how many buildings, how many roads and so on so I'll leave it a medium, that should be fine, it shouldn't take too long to to, to, to uh, generate anyways number of civilizations, I normally leave a medium because I think that's fine maximum number of sites should also be fine with leaving that medium business savagery, mineral occurrence I put on frequent because I like minerals it's completely fine, you can customize as you want there's even a more advanced uh, uh, world creation scene if you want to really get into the nitty gritty of uh, tweaking numbers and really getting the world you want so without, let's just go and get a get on with creating the world so it will first create a flat world with water and some uh, some landing then it will uh, then the algorithm will figure out that okay the mountains would fit here or here and then it will add rivers and minerals and all those sorts of things and it will create it quite naturally as well so the rivers wi rivers will flow down from the mountains into the lakes and uh, there will be uh, deserts and so on on places without that much d rivers it is really quite an amazing feat this game and uh, now uh, the graphic pack does not apply in this case in the world creation screen in the world map so this will still be with ASCII graphics it will however change as soon as you jump into the game and it will be the Phoebus, Phoebus uh, graphics pack. So right now it is creating the history of the world. It has creating all uh, created already all the wildlife, all the terrain, all the elevations, temperatures, and so on and so forth. And is now uh, uh, populating the world with all th these creatures and civilizations and so on. And uh, yeah, it will just take a while. It is now at year 100. I think medium was 250 years and you can see that the amount of historical figures is growing and growing and growing and you can look up each and every one of these in the legends screen from the main menu if you want to it will also recall all, all the events these events are for example dragon attacks or someone settling a city or something along these lines and uh, it, if you really want to get into the lore of this world you can it is procedurally generated so it is new for each and every world and you can learn about the I don't know Freya the Dwarven Barbarian or something uh, we can also see here that this world is apparently called the Adventurous Step which is quite an interesting name I think especially since there are quite a lot of mountains in this 
area. And not that many steps. But what do I know? It might be just how the algorithm is formed. So this is taking rather a long time, so I don't think I will let it go to 250 years. I will stop it at 130-ish. So about here. So 130 is still more than enough years to play around it. I it should have paused. Yep, yeah, there we go. So it is now created. You can uh, look, walk around the world in a minute. So I will just use it as it now exists. And hopefully it will let me do that. No. Why is it not working? Oh, there we go. So, it has now created the world. It is called the Stoked Plain, apparently. The land of Fankaying. Fang Interesting. So now we can walk around in the world. Oh, no, it was just that island. Okay, so it creates <laughs> names for everything in the world. And it is quite incredible, really, how it does that. So we can walk around, looking around, looking at rivers and waters, and so on and so forth. And it's quite big, as you can see. And there should be plenty, plenty of time, uh, space in this world to play around with. So we will just accept this, and then it will save the world, so that we can then manipulate it and walk, work with it and play in it. So it is going to save all the individual assets, and it's going to just take a moment as it does that. Saving buildings and so on. And it will stop responding somewhere in the middle. This is completely normal for the game. Nothing to freak out about. It does this when it saves, when it loads and so on. It's it's completely fine. It 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 will still load properly. So now the world is created, it is saved in a folder and we can start playing and I believe it is region 3 as that would be logical, so I will start that one I will go... we can look at the legends really quick just to have an idea of how much lore that actually is procedurally generated for each and every map you create so we can look at sites for example let's click see here and we can look at the Satana so we can see here that uh, uh, that uh, Satana is called Saber Hole in the common tongue maybe and that it was a cave and then we can see at, that a dragon came there and the giant bath was stolen bath tooth scepter yes and uh, then an elf came and so on and so forth and as you can see there is a ton and a ton of lore about it if you want to get into it and read about them we are not going to do that now we're going to start playing the game instead and we're going to play dwarf fortress mode so here we go it's loading in everything it's going to to have it, this calendar and then it's going to go to it's going to let the world run a bit and then we're going to get to play in it so as you can see it is working through the beginning of the spring here just until the time that we are going to go out and uh, settle a new mountain home somewhere okay so now we get to choose a place for a new city or castle or fortress or whatever you want to call it and I usually do this, that I go and find the side location by clicking F. I like playing on a 5x5 five five grid. It's fine to uh, to play on a 4x4 four four grid as well, or a 3x3. Three three. It should still be more than enough to get you started and get you played, playing, and get you playing for a long, long time without running out of resources. 3x3 uh, three three is still enough. It is plenty enough and that might be good for someone who's new to the game or might not have a powerful computer because this game takes a lot of processing power especially when you start going up to 5x5 five five and so and bigger than that because uh, uh, it has a lot of path pathfinding and it, it generates a lot of things so the bigger it is the more space it will require and the more processing power and so on so it is smart not to go too too big if you don't think your computer can handle it. so. But I will take a 5x5. Five five. I uh, don't care about the savagery or the temperature or anything like that. I do want a flux layer. Flux stone layer. The flux stones are then used to create, I think, steel. 
and uh, some other things and it is really useful if you want to get a steel industry going and you have uh, these iron ores and so on so it is really useful to have this I don't want aquifers however aquifers are these underground uh, systems of water and uh, they are completely they are filled with water they are these like these rooms that you can dig into underground they are filled with water and if you dig into them they will start flooding your fortress and uh, the thing with aquifers is that they never run out they will com continue generating water more and more and more until your fortress is uh, flooded uh, you can if you're you experienced war fortress player you can play around with them and you can use this water to for instance create electricity or something along that along those lines okay maybe not electricity but you can create power from it however we will leave it off as it is a rather bit challenging and I don't really like having to play around them I want a river no rivers are really really useful for example for fishing or just having water constant constant supply of water is really important uh, shallow metal, yes, I want that, and I want multiple shallow metals, so that I can get a lot of metal industry going, maybe. So it could be iron and zinc and bronze and copper, maybe not bronze, but copper and so on. Deep metal, yes, multiple if possible. I want a little clay and soil. Soil is actually really useful to have, uh, because then you can farm in it without having to ir ir irrigate so if you're digging into soil you can immediately farm on the ground however if you're digging into rock immediately then you will have to put water into the ground and then be able to uh, grow crops and uh, sustain yourself that way clay is useful if you want to get a uh, a uh, what's it called pottery industry growing and so on actually I don't think we need that or we don't care about it so we'll leave it like that and then we'll do the search and then it will search th through all these uh, these big areas of the world, all these local regions and so on. And as you can see, the red X's are filling up, and it's going through all of these places. And there are some uh, suitable locations apparently over there. We'll just let it run through all of the region, and then we'll pick a starting spot. <coughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so it seems like this place uh, here is going to be quite a good place in these mountainous parts. So I think we're going to settle somewhere around here, it would seem. Uh, a river is also very, very useful because, as I said, it's a constant supply of water and you will be needing water for irrigation and uh, taking care of sick dwarfs and so on because sick dwarfs will not drink alcohol which healthy dwarfs will drink and uh, it will just be very bad if uh, the dwarfs start dying because you don't have water which can happen if you have only these small pockets of water somewhere and then you exhaust them and don't get the water back quickly enough and that is not that fun okay so we're going to browse the results okay so sorry about that the game crashed on me as I was, try as I was trying to check out the region however now it should be working again and uh, let's see here I like playing a rather mountainous area because I like being able to dig into a mountain and feel like I am uh, really really being dwarfy or whatever you would call it and uh, let's see here and as you mouse over all of these different regions you will see there the local region the region on the world and uh, the local is chosen based on your search criteria and it should be more or less what you search for so that's fine and on the right hand side you can see the temperature the trees the other vegetations and so on and whatever uh, materials there are in this local region so we will want trees because trees is really important in the beginning uh, you can start without uh, in a region without trees and then trade for them or whatever completely possible. I have a, however, I do like this place. I'm going to just check the the elevation. Okay, so it is a bit rocky. Not too rocky, but it is. Uh, it has mountains, it has, a, it has a river and so on. It should be fine. I think so. 
and it has a lot of forest, it has vegetation, meaning it has fruits and berries and all the things you need to get started in the beginning so you don't run out of food. It has sand, clay, deep soil, shallow metals, deep metals and a fluxstone layer. This is actually quite a brilliant spot to start because it has shallow metals, this is really important, that it has metals and not metal, because uh, you if it just says shallow metal and it only has uh, has for example I don't know copper or something you might be out of luck because uh, you don't do that much with copper it's not that valuable it's not that good there are worse metals but it's good to make sure you have shallow metals and so on uh, we will have dwarfs goblins and elves as neighbors that's actually fine you can see there with the red mark that uh, goblins are evil However, that's fine. My civil civilization. Uh, you can see the blue marks here on the world map. As I'm cycling through, you will want a civiliza civilization that is as close to you as possible and as big as possible. I think I'm going to go with the humorous clasps. So, the bigger the civilization is, the more likely it is that you will get new migrants that will join your colony and your fortress. And the bigger it is, the bigger the migration waves will be and so on so it's it's good to try and have a rather a large large dwarven civilization that you set out from and the closer the better usually because then the migrants will co come faster so i think this is completely fine so i will click embark yes that's fine we'll prepare for the journey carefully there are a few uh, pre-made uh, templates if you want to just get into the game and get started however I will prepare carefully because I think it is fun to customize your dwarves so they are good at some things and not that good at other things and you you have more control just that's that's my point here so we're going to start with Onol Kalana Smell he will be our miner so I'll make him proficient miner and I will have two miners it's usually good to have two miners in case someone gets uh, hurt, lost or something along these lines and it just goes faster in the beginning to have two miners that are proficient second thing that is important is having a woodcutter adequate woodcutter should be good uh, I will also make this person our building designer so he will design the buildings and uh, then other people will come and build them, build them. So the way this w game works is you pop down a building, someone will come and design it, someone that is a build building designer, and then the person that will be working in the building will come there with the materials and will build it. So for instance, if you wanted to build a carpenter shop, you need someone who is a building designer, go there, design the building, then the carpenter comes over there and builds the building. So this should be fine for this guy. Next guy will be our mason and carpenter. So meaning that he will be our craftsman. When we get uh, stone and when we get wood, we can create. Have this guy go there and uh, create chairs and beds and doors and all the things we need. So that's fine. This second one. Now we need to think about uh, think about uh, having food. So it's very good to have a grower a herbalist, brewer and cook. These are good because then you will have someone that is able to grow crops when you get that started, someone that can harvest berries and fruit. So before you get started with your with your with your um, uh, with your farming industry it is good to be able to harvest just fruit so that you don't starve. Actually I think I will remove the grower thing from here and actually, no, wait, no, he will be our grower. Uh, I don't think he will be our brewer, though, or cook. I think it's better to add it here, because then he can just uh, farm and let the other people work with this. So that should be fine. Uh, I think that should be fine for now. Next guy, we will go down here. There are a lot of skills that you can use. However, I think this one will be our leader, so we'll give him a leader point. He will be our record keeper, organizer and appraiser. Uh, these things are important because your leader will be mo more often than not your bookkeeper. 
he will keep track of all the things in your for fortress your food your ale and so on and it's good to have a at least adequate record keeper so that he is able to keep track of all the things properly and count them up and so on so that should be fine and then the last one uh, usually I take uh, uh, doctor things and uh, healer things because they are quite hard to come by in migration waves however I don't think I will do that now I will instead go with uh, for example a fish cleaner and fish dissector and fisher if I can find it there it is he will also be no he will not I will make this guy also a mechanic actually because that is good to have he will also be our trapper and butcher so uh, so we will be he will be hunting food fishing for food and so on and then creating leather works out of it so it's good to have this so uh, there we go that's that and uh, yeah that should be all about the dwarfs now let's get over to the items so we have two copper pigs, battle axes, iron anvil, beer and so on so I usually remove for starters a bucket, a splint and a crutch uh, the picks are useful and really important for you to be able to dig into the the mountain. Iron anvil is hard to come by later, so it's good to take one in the beginning. It's also quite good to take a dog, a female and a male, so that you have a breeding pair and they can then be guard dogs or whatever and it's good to have them. Cats are also good. I will take a cat, a female and a male and they will then be on the lookout for vermin that they will be killing and protecting your food source. Uh, I sometimes take horses or chickens or these things. I don't think I will do that now though. I will instead go here and add more, more, more alcohol because dwarves drink a lot of alcohol and it's good to bring a healthy supply with you. As you will see here, I am adding 31 and 51 instead of a uh, uh, nice flat 30. The reason for this is that uh, the ale and alcohol comes in uh, barrels which keep 10. And if you take just one more, it will bring an extra barrel for a very, very cheap cost. And this is useful because barrels are really useful for storing food and other things in so the more barrels you can get for as cheap as possible the better and therefore I bring dwarven ale in 51 quantity and so on I will also take more pigtail and k wheat and sweet pod rock nuts dimple cup these are useful for growing crops prompt helmet is one of your most uh, common food crop and it's good to bring a healthy supply of them to have that also, I will bring up the meat count a bit just to have them. Oops, that's a pond turtle, isn't it? Yes. So, there we go. Then I will add a few new things still. I will go here to drinks and I will add dwarven wine and I will add dwarven rum. I will add, uh, I will add one of them. Oops, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I will be taking one of each just to get the additional barrel and then I will take a few meats not those meats because they are expensive but I will go down and pick a few different meats uh, if you want you can buy uh, no, you can buy uh, wood and you can buy stone and you can buy metal and bring that with you if you think you will be needing it I will not be doing that because I think I have enough wood and enough uh, metal and stone in the ground to get, be able to start going from there. I can actually bring up more bit more wine now that I had the money. There we go. So I think we are all set. We have copper picks, we have battle axes, they are used for chopping down trees. If you don't have these then you'll be out of luck. I've actually removed these because I didn't think I would need battle axes and then I couldn't chop trees so that's not too <laughs> terribly smart. So leave them in there and leave the copper picks in there as well. Okay, I think we have enough uh, meat and uh, other e eatable things to be able to last at least a few months in so that we'll be able to start the food industry and start gathering some food and fish and so on and get self-sufficient from there. This should be absolutely fine. Uh, you'll be usually looking for, uh, what, what would, could I say, maybe 
a lot of alcohol at least because they drink a lot of it so it's good to bring a healthy supply because it can take a while for you to get a brewery industry growing and uh, then it's nice to have a big pile to be able to draw from. They will drink water, the dwarfs, however they are not happy about it so the more alcohol you bring the better. Okay, they should be fine. I could name the fortress if I wanted to but I don't think I'll do that. I think they should be absolutely fine. So I will just click embark and we'll get going from here. I will just load in the world so you can see how the dwarves look and we can have a quick gander at the starting area. So it will again stop responding, that is fine. There we go, you have arrived after a journey from the mountain homes into the forbidding wilderness beyond your harsh trek has finally ended. Your party of seven is to make an outpost for the glory of all of Alec Dodok. So I would imagine that's the Dwarven Civilization, or the city they originated from. There are almost no supplies left, but without, with stout labor comes sustenance, whether by a bolt, plow or hook, provide for your Dwarves. You are expecting a supply caravan just before winter entombs you, but it is spring now enough time to de delve se secure lodgings ere the dingoes get hungry. A new chapter of Dwarven history begins here, at this place, Uritskugral, Scarship, Strike the Earth. So, st scar Scarship is the name of our fortress then, okay. And yes, we are starting in the spring and in autumn there will be a supply caravan from which you can buy different supplies and uh, materials that you will be needing for the coming years. And you should be able to create a proper, proper dwarven fortress at that point, or a functioning uh, any of the ways. So it will be loading up the game and it should be saving at the beginning of the game as well. You are always starting with seven dwarves, and uh, you can customize them however you want. I usually like taking two miners and uh, one leader, and uh, a bit, a few that make food, and a carpenter and mason. That is all these things. Okay, so here's the game in loaded with the Phoebus graphics packs. Your game might look different if you're using the ASCII graphics or if. Uh, if you're not using a graphics pack at all or another graphics pack. So here are here are our dwarves. These are roots and uh, all of this is a mountain. So I think we can zoom out a bit and see that there are is a lot of trees in this area. And that it goes down and there is indeed a river. So we are three spaces above. So this should be an absolutely perfect starting spot for us. Okay, good. Uh, I also love the details of this game, as you can see here is a tree trunk and it goes up and continues and continues as the, as the tree grows upwards and it's just amazing that they do that. However, I think I will need to put a cut in here and we will come back to the fortress and see if we can't strike the earth and delve secure lodgings for us. However, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.